How's it going everyone? This is a quick tutorial on how to set up your Avermedia HD DVR capture card in order to live stream to websites like Justin TV, Ustream, or any other kind of websites like that nature. Uh, I'm not going to go over hardware software installation. Um, it's pretty self explanatory. Uh, if you don't know how to set it up, just tons and tons of uh, tutorials on the web and YouTube how to set up a video card. Um, after you install all the software drivers with the uh, included CD in the box, uh, or uh, the drivers from the Avermedia USA website, you're uh, pretty much halfway there, good to go. Um, fortunately, software included with the capture card doesn't serve the purpose of live streaming. Also, the program, the main program, which most capture cards use in order to stream, uh, has a little conflict of uh, detecting the video and audio signal from the capture card, and I'll get into detail with that a little bit later. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download and install Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder, the program I just mentioned. And you're also going to want to download and install Manicam. If you're having a problem finding them on the web, I'll make it easy for you and I'll you know, include the links in the description. <coughs> After that, uh, if you have a, if you connect whatever you want to stream, whether it's your DirecTV, TiVo, your Xbox 360, your PS3, your Wii, whatever, what have you, after you connect it to your capture card, you're going to want to bring up your Avery Media Center. After that uh, pops up, you're going to want to click on TV. Now right now, my Xbox isn't on. Uh, make sure to collect, I mean, collect, select from the drop down menu the correct connection, whatever you're going to stream has with your capture card, minus component or RGB. If some people are still confused. And turn on my Xbox. And uh, it'll automatically detect it. And after you see the feed is coming in, video and audio is coming in through your preview video. Uh, live, so that the feed is stretched out throughout the whole window. After that, after you download and install Manicam, what you want to do is you want to open it. And under the effects tab, this is crucial. Make sure you have Mani, show Manicam logo unchecked. If you do have it checked, this little watermark will be apparent throughout your whole stream and it looks like cheap shit. Make sure you have that unchecked. Um, and over here on the sources, you'll see your capture card here. You might say to yourself, well why don't you select that? Well let's select it and see what happens. Can't connect to video source. I just got a text message. What about the secondary? Same thing. I don't know what's wrong. What's the conflicting issue with the hardware? The, the software issue? I don't know. Don't want to bother troubleshooting or debugging. The point is, I've tried numerous times you know, using this method and the other uh, method, the VHS screen cap and multicam. Some people said to use that. The same shit happens. I can't. I don't know. I can't figure it out. This isn't the only uh, other way I can do it. Uh, is that egress? Click on the desktop menu. Your update rate will default at 50. Drag it to the left until it's zero. Click on custom desktop. Now, if you're having, if you're running a dual monitor or even a tri monitor setup, just drag, drag your Aver Media Center to one monitor. You know, expand it all the way, and you can even hit full desktop and you can record the whole thing. For those of us that are just using one monitor, just click custom desktop. A gray window will appear. Now you can either stretch or drag it. Make sure that you only have a black bar on the top and bottom on this preview mirror, right? Preview mirror, preview video right here. After you're done, you, you know, think it's all good and dandy, just hit enter. If you want to, you know, adjust it a little bit more, take a little bit more, take a little bit less. Uh, the same thing as soon as your heart's content, hit enter. 
that's done with. You know, you can either minimize it or you know, close it out. Let's bring up your Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder. I'll kind of bring it to the side right here so you can kind of see how it's not that, not as quick to snap, not you know, quick to respond, but it's better than nothing. No, I'll uh. I'll move it through the window, I mean, through the, through the menu, see how, how it kind of takes it. It's alright, better than nothing, right? Now for your video device, make sure you have it on Manicam Video Source. Don't bother selecting your capture card or you will go through the same problem and it, it will take even longer to get out of it. Trust me. For your audio device, if you have a sound card, select that. If you're like most of us, I just have onboard uh, sound. I don't even know what that means. And just select stereo mix, raw, tech, high definition, audio drivers. Uh, make sure your format is at MP3. Your channel's at stereo. Your sample rate is at 44 kilohertz. Your bit rate will default at, I believe, 128. I set it to 192. It's all depending on your preference. Set your format for your video to H.264. Your frame rate to oh yeah this will vary for everyone the reason I say that is because not everyone has the same computer and they do not have the same internet connection but internet connection I don't mean how fast your if you're one if you're running wireless how fast your uh, adapter connects to uh, your router or how fast your transfer uh, LAN speed is on your motherboard I'm talking your actual internet connection whether it's cable uh, broadband DSL, satellite, some people are even using dial up. I don't know why. This is the fucking 21st century. Anyway, um, if you have a bad computer but you have good internet connection, your stream's gonna look like shit because your computer cannot handle and process all that high quality going in through it and push it out. However, if you have a beast computer and you have a poor internet connection, you're not gonna be able to upload as much and your bandwidth is just going to be you know compact and your stream is going to suffer you got to balance out plain, plain and simple now start off uh, just my recommendation I start off either 29.97 frames per second or even 30 uh, maybe even uh, start off like a resolution of 480 by 360 and make sure that your output is either the same size or smaller than your input because if you have a bigger, it's going to stretch it out and it's you might lose frame rate and it looks sluggish and it looks really sloppy. Now your bit rate, you might want to start out say 650, even 800, just to test the waters. And after that, you know, see how it is, see if uh, lowering or raising the, your bit rate increases the performance of your stream, raising your you know, frames per second or lowering them. Tweak it a little bit, even your input and output size. Tweak it so you know you see where uh, you see what benefits you and what improves the stream quality. Um, the output, uh, all that you could. Uh, I'm not gonna go over that. You could find either on the Justin TV or Ustream uh, frequently asked questions pages, uh, or even on YouTube how to set up Adobe Flash Media to, uh, to stream to Justin TV or to Ustream. Uh, you're probably going to need to download your XML profile. Uh, those tutorials will go over that if you don't know how to do it. Uh, they're pretty clear about it. Um, other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. After that, when you all set and go, I can figure out uh, where you want to stream to and all that. You know, just click start, start playing, or, or watch on TV if you're streaming on TV. Other than that, it's uh, pretty much click and go. Uh, hope this helped out some people that uh, found a little bit trouble some of the other tutorials about using this particular capture card how to live stream it uh, I found them either misleading or very unclear uh, I've had this card for about like a month already and um, if I had known it lacked the capability of live streaming I probably would have saved up a little bit more and probably got the black intensity Pro, Black Magic Intensity Pro. Uh, no. 
for the 720p recording device, it's pretty good for the price. The only difference is it likes to live stream. Other than that, man, it's pretty much bang for your buck. Um, other than that, if you have any tips or tricks, uh, if you have another way, if you found out another way, if you're using this card, you found out how to live stream, other than the methods that I said using either Manicam or VHS screen cap, um, feel free to shoot me a comment or uh, shoot me a PM. Uh, this helped out. Glad. This is what I'm here for. I like helping out people. Uh, Feel free to subscribe, uh, comment, you know, any feedback is welcome, pretty much. Uh, other than that, hope this helped out for you guys, and I'll see you guys later.